In this CAD for Newbies tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use lofts in Fusion 360 to create some crazy vases. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So in previous CAD for Newbies tutorials, the features we've talked about in Fusion 360 were all kind of self-explanatory. I mean, we had extrudes and revolves and what they did kind of made sense in the name. So what the heck is a loft? Well, a loft is a very powerful feature you have at your disposal in Fusion 360. And I'm going to show you how to use lofting to create any sort of crazy shaped vase, I'm sorry, vase, that you like. And it's actually one of the more powerful tools you can use in Fusion 360, but it's actually one of the more unpredictable tools. So it's definitely a more advanced feature to start using once you've mastered extrudes, revolves, and even considering mastering sweeps. So if you haven't seen those videos and also my basic uh, beginners ones in sketches for Fusion 360, go uh, check the original playlist because you want to start from the beginning. Uh, starting from here might be a little bit difficult, but See how you go. So what is lofting anyway? Well, lofting is a CAD term used to describe the creation of 3D shapes using profiles, guidelines, or guide rails. Lofts are standalone, in my opinion, as a very powerful way to quickly create very organic 3D objects in a parametric way, in that you can go back and quickly change your original profiles, your sketches, and update your loft but the actual lofted shapes have a very organic sort of flowing feel to them. You can create very complicated shapes very easily using lofts. This does definitely have a disadvantage though. Lofts can be very difficult to control and they can fail for no apparent reason. So they can be quite frustrating to use as a beginner when you're trying to use lofting and you're not quite sure how it's working. So in this video, I'm going to give you the rundown on how lofting works in Fusion 360 and we're going to draw some crazy shaped vases or vases that you could then go and 3D print. So let's start at the beginning. A loft at its most basic form only needs two profiles offset from each other and then the lofting command will join those two shapes by gradually morphing from the original profile into the finishing profile. At its, at its most basic that's what a loft is but obviously they can get a lot more complicated than that. You can have a lot more profiles and you can have guide rails which then help control the curves. So let's draw a very basic loft right now. I'm gonna create a new sketch on my top plane here. Hit C for circle, draw a nice circle there and stop sketch. I'm not even gonna bother dimensioning it. I'm not gonna worry about that for this. And I'm gonna create an offset plane. So construct, offset plane, and I'm going to offset it 100 millimeters, like that. Now I'm going to create a new sketch. Create sketch on this plane. But instead of drawing a uh, circle, I'm going to draw an ellipse. From this point out to here, like that. So two similar shapes, but they are very different. And what I'm going to do now, stop sketch, is I'm going to use the lofting feature to morph them into a 3D shape. So create and loft and the lofting window pops up. So the selection order in lofts is very, very important. You want to select in the order that your part will be formed, not randomly and not arbitrarily. And it's very, very critical you get this right because it will cause a loft to fail if you get it wrong. So I'm gonna select my first profile here and then the second one here. And very quickly, we have formed our loft. Now, this is a very, very basic loft, as I said, between two shapes. But as I said, lofting as a beginner can be a little bit daunting trying to figure out why it may be working or why it not, may not be working. And it comes down to these guide rails here. So you can see this path up here is the path the loft takes, but you can move them. And um, as you move them, it kind of twists things up. But as you can probably imagine, if I keep pulling this around, it's gonna to get to the point where it fails. Now in the previous Cat for Newbies video, we talked about sweeps and mentioned how they can't self intersect or they'll fail and lofts are very similar. If a loft self intersects, it's game over, it will fail. You cannot form a stable three dimensional object or three dimensional form with a loft that intersects itself. 
But you can also choose how your loft intersects with the profiles. For example, it's defaulted to connected here and the terminology isn't really important. I mean, every CAD package is different, but here you can actually change it to direction. And what this is doing is changing the loft's beginnings to be basically perpendicular from that profile. You can see if by pulling this out, it's you can sort of change how far that carries out. Now that might be what you want, or you might want it to just immediately carry the, uh, the shortest path to the next profile, which would be this sort of straight line here. So in most cases, you'll want this uh, guideline to just be what it, what it automatically generates. But what if you want to give it a custom path to a custom guideline or guide rail? Well, you can draw one. So I'm just going to cancel this and I'm going to do a new sketch, create sketch on the front plane. So we've got our two profiles. I'm going to draw a kind of wavy guide rail. So sketch and I'm going to choose spline select the edge of our profile and then just kind of draw kind of a wavy um, wavy rail like that. I'm just going to move it around a little bit so it's not too ridiculous. But yeah, let's, let's go with that. Let's see how that goes. Stop sketch. And again, create loft and um, it's automatically selected one which I don't want so get rid of that. So circle and then my final profile is the top and then our rail we can select this line here and it will conform our loft to that rail which is pretty cool actually um, and it as you can probably see opens up a very 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 real possibility to create very organic complicated shapes with only three sketches and one feature depending how many profiles you have and keep in mind again it can get more and more complicated as you add more profiles you can also close off a loft so you have this closed option and you can actually select all the way around and complete an entire ring, for example, of different shaped profiles and join it back together. A little bit advanced, I'm not going to show it in this CAD for Newbies tutorial. It's something that I rarely use myself, but it's something to keep in mind if you want to do something like that, it is possible. Just um, be prepared for a bit of trial and error when trying to make that work. So let's put it all together and make one wacky vase. So let's go to Create Sketch and Top Plane. So uh, for my uh, vase, uh, vase. I'm just going to say both. So I want a pretty decently sized base so it doesn't fall over. So I'm just going to make it uh, 50 millimeters in diameter. That looks good to me. Stop sketch. And again, we want to create an offset plane. Offset plane from our original sketch. 50 is fine. This is going to be the middle of my vase. And then I'm going to create another offset sketch. Offset plane, sorry. To 50 again from the top. So it's going to be 100 millimeters overall in height. Not very tall. But I'm going to have three profiles in total for my loft. So I'm going to select the middle one initially, create sketch, and I'm going to bring out the old spline tool. So splines are a nightmare to dimension, um, so I'm not even going to bother, but I'm just going to make some crazy wacky shapes with my spline like this. Da, 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 da. Kind of looks like Ditto or something. <laughs> Done. And again, create sketch my uh, other offset plane. This is the one at 100, 100 millimeters. And also going to go to sketch and spline and just create one that's even further out. Da, 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 da. Maybe it intersects itself in a few areas. Uh, like that. I'm going to move some of the points in a little bit closer. Maybe a little bit further. That looks pretty good to me. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I like that. Okay, stop sketch. Now let's loft this bad boy. So let's go to create loft first profile um, or it had had a point selected. Again, remember selection uh, selection order is very important. So no, get rid of those. So first profile, second, third. So already it's pretty nuts. I mean, it's going from you can see how lofts are very powerful. It's going from the circle, then turning into this this spline here and then following onto another spline here at the top. Again, we can change how it, uh, how it flows off from our first profile. So I can change it to direction there. Uh, sort of tightens up a bit because don't forget, it's sort of constricting across that middle one, middle one here. So as I pull this up further, it kind of gets more and more crinkled. I don't want that, I just want um, connected. 
it's fine and I can change where this uh, this default guide rail is I can move it around it really probably won't go very far before breaking <laughs> but that's like a crazy twist I quite like that so you could create your own um, guide guide rail to do what we did before to make this even more wacky but I quite like that it's a nice sort of flowing curved shape um, it would 3d print very easily the overhangs aren't very steep and it has a nice fair, fairly large base so there you have it guys, that's how to use the lofting feature in Fusion 360 to create wacky looking organic shapes with a very high degree of control and you can create a crazy vase very very easily. So there's pretty much an infinite number of shapes you could use to make, make a vase. You can even use your logo to like warp into the logo and then warp to another shape. Again using the, the tips I mentioned and just a little quick one last little tip here. Um, if you want to actually make it a proper um, hollowed out vase instead of actually using vase mode on your printer I use the shell command to do this which is under the modify and then shell so what a shell does is exactly what it says on the tin you select a face for example I selected the top face of my vase and said how thick I want the inside walls and then it removes that face and gives everything a uniform thickness. Shell is very powerful. I'll be talking about it in a future video here on the CAD for Newbies tutorial series. And if you enjoy this video, guys, please do consider subscribing. Um, it's currently 1 a.m. I love bringing this sort of content to you guys. I live for it, and I hope you found this video useful. So until next time, guys, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.